<laughs> I went on Forge and Fire, the uh, the one where they do the blacksmithing, the where they forge. <sighs> okay, so basically, for all you guys that don't know, and you can check this out, a lot of my older videos are blacksmithing videos, but I used to do a lot of blacksmithing. Uh, I can't do it anymore because I'm up at college now and I just don't have the materials or tools or anything like that, or the time. And now my focus is just switched to strongman and that kind of stuff in college, so. But, I used to be really into blacksmithing, and I gotta be honest, I was pretty good. Basically, how I got on Forged in Fire was, well, I had started emailing them when I was about 16 years old, which is, like, too young. You have to be 18 to be on the show. So I emailed them twice, and then I emailed them a third time when I was 17, and they finally emailed me back, and they told me I was too young. But they said that they could get me signed up and ready to go so that when I do turn 18, I'd be on the nearest episode. But then something really fun happened. It rhymes with Bovid. I was going to go on right before COVID hit. And then I couldn't go on until this last April. So it was almost a f it was over a year. Basically, the process was one of the casting agents posted something on Facebook. And my friend, Logan Buren, who's been in some of my videos, texted me about it. And he was like, hey, you should respond because she was asking for Forge and Fire participants. So I sent her a Facebook message and she responded. She was like, yeah, you seem pretty cool. So then we had a phone interview to start out with and then a Skype interview and during the Skype interview I basically explained my experience and she had a recording so that she could show it to the other casting agents so that they could decide whether or not I was a good fit and then I finally got the okay that I could go on the show and keep in mind this was all back in 2020 in like February so way before I even went on the show. Back then, I'm not gonna lie, I was not as experienced as I am now. So that actually played a big factor because I spent basically spent that whole summer because of COVID just forging like for hours a day. And so my experience just went through the roof versus what it was when I had first applied for that show. So yeah, they finally gave me the okay and then COVID hit. And then I didn't hear much from them for basically a year and I had moved off to college so I had stopped blacksmithing. in. April, it was literally like a, a week before they were gonna have me out there or flying a week before I flew out They called me and they're like, hey, do you want to go on this episode? And I was like Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they sent me an email basically explaining. Hey, here's your plane ticket. Here's your hotel We're gonna fly you out. This is basically how it works that kind of stuff. I flew out April 16th or something like that and I just spent the last two weeks just practicing, getting ready and preparing. Um, and on the way there, it was still snowing in April. Welcome to Minnesota. So I got to the airport at like 2 o'clock p.m. And my flight kept getting delayed. And then I was going to get on a different flight that was going to take me to Chicago. And then it was going to take me to New York where I had to fly to. Then the, the flight from Chicago to New York got canceled. And so I almost got on a plane that took me to Chicago and I would have been stuck in Chicago. But the producer was like, hey man, don't go on that plane. We're gonna get you set up with some Delta Airlines. So I basically stayed in the airport for seven hours and I left at like 9 p.m. And then when I got there, my phone was at like 5%, which was really freaking me out. And I never got a confirmation that I had like an Uber ride there to the, from the airport to the hotel. So, and I never got one and I was trying to call the producer and no one was picking up because it's you know it's like 12 o'clock at night at this point and so I almost ordered like a $200 ride from the airport to my hotel and then finally my finally the casting agent called me back and then she was like yeah we we got it and so I got that ride to the hotel and by the time I got there and got into bed the night before I was supposed to compete it had been like 2 a.m. by the time I got in bed which I'm not making excuses, I promise. I'm just saying, it was, it was a stressful day. So, the next day, ate some good breakfast, got ready to go, and then we went to the filming location. It was a really, really cool spot. They had a power hammer and a hydraulic press and all that good stuff. They had some fresh belts for the belt grinder. So basically the challenge was we had these 10 pound sledgehammers and we had to turn those into usable blades. So basically the two requirements were, the first one is the blade had to be under two pounds and it had to be 13 to 15 inches long. 
So I don't know if you know, but like 13 to 15 inches is really, really long for a blade that, or for a knife. That's basically like a machete at that point. Um, so that's basically what I like designed my blade to be is a machete because I really like the, sh the shape. We were given our stress tests before the challenge, so sometimes they don't do that, but we were able to do that, so we were actually able to plan ahead. So I planned a machete, a machete shape. Wow, machete shape. I planned a machete shape because we had a bamboo chop and a water tube slice, so I didn't have anything to stab. So there's no reason to put like a big sharp point on it. So we had three hours to forge the blade and two hours to finish it. The first three hours, I was the first person to cut a usable chunk of steel off that 10 pound sledgehammer because you don't want to use all 10 pounds obviously. And the reason being is that I have a lot of experience with cutting through like thick pieces of steel because I could never afford to like buy some pre-made steel on like the other competitors that I was competing against. And so for that reason, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I had to go straight to the angle grinder and cut through because they had these really thin angle grinder discs and those cut through the fastest. And normally, uh, the biggest concern with like a thinner angle grinding disc is that it's going to wear out really fast, but there's like 10 of them there and I didn't have to pay for them. So fuck it. I'm going to cut straight through. And I was the first, in, the first person to get my uh, usable chunk of steel out and I got it welded to a piece of rebar, shoved it in the forge and just started forging from there. From there, the forging process actually went really well. It's really, really weird going from using a hand hammer and moving steel at like a really slow rate to using a hydraulic press and a power hammer um, because they move steel so fast it's actually ridiculous. Uh, so that was a really really cool experience. I followed my blueprint pretty much like down to the dot. I didn't have any issues when it come when it came to like weight and length because I only cut off basically like two pounds worth so I didn't need any more than that. I, I make thin blades all the time. I think they're better anyways. So that wasn't an issue. The only issue that I did have in round one was I got a warp in my blade while I was heat treating. The reason for that is, is I wanted to grind most of my blade before heat treat because I've seen the heat from the grinder crack a blade after it's been heat treated and before it's been tempered. And you know, obviously we don't temper in the first round. That's like, that takes hours to do. So that's done in between the first and second round. So I didn't want to heat treat right away, but I got just way too ambitious with the belt grinder and ground off. I don't want to say too much material, but it was too much material before heat treat. I went for the heat treat, did a couple normalizing cycles, and then I quenched it. And I made sure not to quench the tang either because I still needed to drill holes. The only, I did have a good warp in my blade though, and I did my best to fix it, but I'm not, I didn't want to touch it in round one because I didn't want to snap my blade. When round one was over, I knew it was going to be between me and then uh, another guy, Neil, and the only difference was my blade was much more refined and finished, it just had that warp. His blade was a little bit crusty yet, it still had a couple hammer marks in it and it was a little bit thicker, but everybody met parameters and all that stuff, so it was really between me and him, and uh, they did let me pass through, and I, it was a very close call that we definitely didn't make it easy for them at all. So then I got to round two. Now, first thing I did was I fixed that warp. Basically, I just heated up the, the spine of the blade and like kind of bent it back. It actually worked really well. I was actually able to get all the warp out, which is good. And then um, started grinding on my blade, finished grinding the handle, drilled holes, got my slabs of wood through. I originally used uh, the plastic handle from the sledgehammer because I was like, hey, that's got a really nice shape to it. If it can stick together, that'll be good. So I took that risk. It didn't work out. It never works out. Never use the plastic handles ever. They just don't work. Round two is over. I actually really, really liked the way my blade looked and handle. I, th I felt for five hours I did a really great job with that and so did all my other competitors. They did amazing. The big difference between me and my competitors is that I had a warp in my blade and I only sharpened my blade on the belt grinder. They both use sharpening stones. When it came down to it, their blades were definitely sharper than mine. But during the strength test, which was the bamboo chop, their blades both had a little bit of glinting, which is where like the edge just kind of folds a little bit. And um, the edge would still be sharp after that, but it is, it, it, is techni it is damage to the edge. So Josh got edge damage. He got that little glinting. And then Mike got a little bit of glinting and his handle scale started to pop off a little bit. And then I, during the strength test, got a little bit of a bend back in my blade. And I think that's because when you soften the spine, it'll bend a little bit. 
and it won't go back to shape because it's not hardened anymore. And so I think that's why when I, they were hitting it with that pipe, mine bent a little bit. Another factor is that when they were chopping through the bamboo, uh, my blade was the only one that chopped all the way through, so they were chopping it against like the wooden table. And so that is a little less flex than the bamboo itself. And I think that's when it bent. I'm not at all like trying to come up with excuses or anything like that because it could have been any of our blades that chopped through and theirs probably wouldn't have bent either way. That is a factor and I think that's why my blade bent. So yeah, I ended up getting eliminated in the second round because of my bent blade and those two moved on to the final and Josh did win, which is good because he was uh, doing a lot of work for charity and he definitely deserved that win. All my competitors were actually amazing and I really enjoyed being there with them and we went out to eat for dinner and it was a lot of fun and I have new friends now from like all over the US, which is awesome. If I did it again, here's a couple things I would do differently. I wouldn't have even messed with the plastic handle because don't ever do that. I wouldn't have ground my blade too much before heat treat. I would have kept it as thin as it was because I think that helped it out actually, but I would not have ground it so thin before heat treat. I would have done another normalizing cycle because I think the power hammer and the hydraulic press put more stresses on that steel than I had ever been used to. Other than that, that's about all I, that's about all I would do. Um, I would probably refine my hand a little bit more because that was another issue that they had with my blade was that the handle wasn't refined enough. So that's probably another thing I'd do. When it comes down to not competition things, I would just try and be a little bit less nervous because it's super chill there. And during the interviews, you can kind of tell that I'm on edge a little bit and it's just it was a new environment for me, and uh, but I was definitely very, very nervous, and there's really just no need for that. But overall, it was a, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Who knows? Maybe I'll be back on there again someday. They said they'd love to have me back on. So if you're looking to watch this episode, it is season eight, episode twenty-three. It's called Sledgehammer Showdown. It's on the History Channel. You can check it out. That's basically it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to see some of my other content now because I started doing some strongman shit. So, and I will catch you guys in the next one.